This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, an online therapy platform. There's nothing wrong with needing help. I've been open about my struggles with depression and anxiety, and binging with Babish would not exist had I not started going to therapy. Therapy helped me learn how to take better care of myself, push out of my comfort zone, and seek out new creative endeavors, like making YouTube videos. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is really important for me because finding a therapist that you like and can afford can be really hard, especially if you're only limited to options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and when you fill out their questionnaire, you're matched with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com slash babish. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. So whether you're working through something like depression or anxiety, or you're just a person who's going through something and needs to talk to someone, I recommend starting therapy to help you look at life in a different way. Go to betterhelp.com dot com slash babish to get 10% off your first month. Okay, so the core components of Tex-Mex style enchiladas are fillings, sauce, tortillas, and cheese. Let's start with the fillings. First up, a braised beef. I've got one and a half pounds of boneless chuck roast that I'm breaking up into one inch cubes, generously seasoning with kosher salt, mixing thoroughly to combine, and letting sit at room temperature for about an hour. Then in a high-walled saute pan or brazier, we're sauteing one large, roughly chopped onion in two tablespoons of neutral oil. Once you got a little bit of color going, we're gonna add four crushed cloves of garlic, two bay leaves, and one and a half teaspoons of oregano. Allow that to be merely kissed by the heat for about 30 seconds, then add enough beef stock to just barely cover the onions. Then we're going to sort of nestle the beef on top, making an effort to only partially submerge it in the stock. Because instead of searing the beef, we're going to rely on the oven to bring the brownness. Oop, almost forgot. Teaspoon of black peppercorns, bring things up to a simmer, and then once this guy's bubbling, he's added into a preheated 300 degree Fahrenheit oven for anywhere from two to four hours, fetching every 45 minutes or so to shuffle the beef to make sure that it browns evenly. Then once the beef is very, very very tender, we're going to optionally cover and refrigerate overnight. This just makes the beef easier to shred and the fat easier to remove from the cooking liquid. And there you have it, the filling for our beef enchiladas, which then brings us to the question of sauce. Most often a cherry red enchilada sauce or a classic salsa verde. To make the former, I'm starting with two ounces of guajillo chiles, one ounce of ancho chiles, one ounce of pasilla chiles, and two or three chiles de arbol, all of which I'm going to stem, seed, and roughly chop before treating them to a little toasting in a dry saute pan. Three to four minutes of over medium heat or until fragrant, and then we're adding just enough water to cover the chilies, along with half a white onion roughly chopped and three cloves of garlic peeled and smashed. Bring the water up to a bare simmer, kill the heat, and cover, allowing to steep for 30 minutes before transferring into the jar of a blender along with one cup of the steeping water, which Kendall and Nico dared me to taste. So I did, and gotta say, it was pretty good. Not gonna replace my morning coffee anytime soon. Anyway, we're adding that to the blender and blending on high speed for about one minute until completely smooth. Go ahead and set that aside because believe it or not, we're not done yet. To finish the actual sauce, we're heating three tablespoons of neutral flavored oil in a high-walled saute pan until shimmering, at which point we're going to add three tablespoons of flour, whisking together to make a thick but whiskable roux, which we're going to cook over medium-high heat for one to two minutes until it starts to turn a lovely shade of golden brown, at which point we're going to add one teaspoon of cumin and three quarters of a teaspoon of oregano, allowing that to toast in the hot roux for about 30 seconds, and then slowly streaming in three and a half cups of chicken or beef stock, adding one little splash at a time and whisking until completely combined. Once you got all the stock whisked in there, we're also going to add our chili puree. Looks to have yielded about a cup and a half, two cups worth. Now we're going to bring this up to a simmer over medium-high heat, cranking the heat all the way down to low, and cooking, whisking occasionally for anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes until the sauce comfortably coats the back of a spoon. So that's sauce number one and filling number one. Let's move on to chicken. I've got two large chicken breasts here that I'm going to butterfly, that is, cut them across the center of the breast and open them up like a book. Then over in a wide, high-walled saute pan, I'm bringing about five cups of water Water, four garlic cloves, two bay leaves, a tablespoon of peppercorns, and half a roughly chopped onion up to a simmer. Once riotously bubbling, we're going to remove the lid, kill the heat, and let it stand until it's reached about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to drop in our chicken breasts and let them steep in the hot water for about 15 minutes until their thickest point registers 160 Fahrenheit. I know this looks kind of gross, but it's sort of like a cheater's sous vide. The breasts are being slow poached, which means they're going to retain more moisture and end up less stringy once cooked. Once they're up to temp, we're going to let them cool to room temperature or fridge overnight before shredding. Now into the sauce, in this case a salsa verde. I've got two jalapenos that I'm going to stem, cut in half, and seed. Two poblanos, same deal, and eight to ten peeled tomatillos staying in one piece. Oop, 
Come on back, little guy. These are all headed onto a foil-lined rimmed baking sheet along with two cloves of garlic and are headed under the broiler for anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes depending on your broiler's strength. We just want to catch a little light char on the vegetables. Go ahead and let those cool off a bit before adding to the jar of a blender along with 10 to 12 cilantro stems folded up however necessary, a generous pinch of kosher salt, a few twists of freshly ground black pepper, then blend on high speed for about a minute, making good use of a blender stuffing stick if available. We want this sauce to be pourable but still have a nice texture to it so don't overblend. Last but not least, we're going to do a little vegetarian filling. Sauteing half an onion that's sort of somewhere between sliced and chopped. Slopped. Half a slopped onion for two to three minutes until beginning to soften and take on some color. Scooting things to the side and adding one small slopped zucchini. Letting that saute for another two to three minutes until it too is starting to take on some color. And I had one too many poblanos on that broiler tray, so I'm going to add that too. Skin removed and roughly slopped. Ooh, that didn't sound good. I'm going to stop using that word now. We're then sauteing everything together for five to seven minutes until lightly caramelized. Last thing we gotta do before assembling and baking is toast our corn tortillas. Just dropping those directly over an open flame until it's got some nice char and becomes appropriately flexible. Gonna need about 12 tortillas for an average size casserole or eight for a 10 inch cast iron pan. To make sure they stay pliable, we're keeping them warm as we toast them in a clean dish towel. Now to assemble, we're first laying down a solid half cup of sauce, largely for stickage prevention, so we're gonna spread it out evenly on the bottom of the pan. Then the assembly line goes like this. First, the tortillas dipped in the sauce, thoroughly saturating it and covering every square inch, transferring to a designated rolling surface because things are going to get slopped, adding the filling in this case with the salsa verde, I'm going with the shredded chicken, and rolling up tightly into a sort of savory cigar, placing that seam side down in the appropriate corner of your casserole. Rinse and repeat until the whole dang thing's full, nestled edge to edge with tortillas, top with additional salsa verde, then comes the cheese, which of course we shredded ourselves. Six to eight ounces of Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, or Mild Cheddar. Then it's the exact same procedure with different parts parts for the beef enchiladas, thoroughly coating each tortilla in classic enchilada sauce, stuffing to the rafters with beef, wrapping tightly, and arranging symmetrically. This time I'm going to use a 10-inch cast iron pan. Extra sauce drizzled over top, and of course lots and lots of cheese. I'm going to go with both cheddar and Monterey Jack for this one. Last but not least, for the vegetarian version, I'm dipping first in the enchilada sauce, loading it up with our cooked vegetables and a rope of Oaxaca cheese, wrapping up tightly in the same procedure. But for this one, I'm using both sauces, in what I think will be a controversial but delicious decision. No matter how you chose to stuff and stack. These guys are headed into a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven, first being covered in foil. Then after 10 minutes, we're going to remove the foil, bake for an additional 5 to 10 until bubbly and lightly brown. To garnish, I'm going to crumble some farmer's cheese or cotilla over top, hit it with a little bit of grated lime zest, drizzle with crema, available wherever crema is sold, and scatter with cilantro in big pick-offable pieces like these if you're like me and you don't like cilantro. And there you have it, some absolutely lovely Tex-Mex enchiladas. Positively brimming with flavor and of course, melty cheese. And depending on which sauce and filling you choose, either quite easy and quick or a little challenging and taking the better part of a day. Either way, it's like an hour and a half or a day well spent.